1412, it took four years to complete. The, I wanted to show you this slide because I wanted to show you some of the common breeds in this period of time. Uh, this includes the Greyhound, the Spaniel, Poodles, and Mastiffs that were owned and gifted to families of prominence, distinction, prestige, and nobility. So you're seeing animals served on the table as food, but also animals allowed on the table, like these tiny dogs here. And then you have the um, Greyhounds that you'll hear, you'll see a lot of. Um, that's being fed. So now animals are kind of invited into the home, which I find interesting. Um, also, another side interesting fact, 80% of the dogs that we see in our world today, like in our everyday life, are a modern breed, you might say, that have only been around for the last 150 to 200 years. So really, there weren't that many breeds as we recognize today back then. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is that a lot of these animals were considered pure breeds and they were kept that way. A lot of what we see today, um, uh, like the, the Boston, what is it called, the Boston Terrier? Boston Terrier, that's one that's sort of recent, as you can tell from the name, because it obviously is an American breed from Boston. Okay, so it's not that old. This is a marble statue, a pair of dogs, probably greyhounds. You can see, I wanted to include a statue that you can see the, the unbelievable skill of the, of the um, artist. Although I don't know the artist of this particular piece. Um, this was found in Italy and now it's housed in the British Museum. And I wanted to just show you how this artist read, you know, rendered the bodies of these greyhounds with the rib cage. I think it's exquisite. I mean, this is such an excellent example. Um, but what I find interesting is that the connection, the relationship that people have had with dogs. I mean, to imagine the amount of time and the amount of, amount of pain that it took to create something like this. You really have to have a relationship with animals to be that dedicated. This is um, an Italian artist that were that uh, on the left, there were laws in their society that prohibited commoners from owning such dogs uh, that were considered like hunting dogs and entertaining certain hunting grounds were forbidden. So I thought that was a really interesting thing. Um, these, these are called venatic dogs and they were considered dutiful, resolute, and dependable. So the animals that were considered for the hunt, they had a job to do and including the horses. And also in, in the subcontinent of India, Asian elephants were used by nobility to, to go on these hunts for the Bengal tiger. They would actually circle, they would take several elephants to circle the tiger and, um, and then the, the men would kill the tiger. But really it was a collective effort and the dogs being up front. On the right you can see these two Venetian ladies that um, have several pets, but really loving on the dogs, are kind of playing with one of them, you know, hold, shaking hands with the other. So you're seeing like the beginning of real true dog ownership, a true love, a true bond. At first glance, you might think that this is a Vermeer, but good guess, real close, right? It looks a lot like it, um, especially that woman near the window. It's another Dutch genre <coughs> painter. And his name is Gabriel Matsu, and it's up from the same time period, 1660s, which is probably is the reason why it looks so similar to us. Um, and it's called Women Reading, Woman Reading a Letter. So the woman on the uh, right in the brown is holding a letter in her hand, and she's also holding a bucket. So she received this letter, and she is looking probably at a nautical scene underneath that green fabric. Um, her husband is most likely at sea. The dog in the middle is a symbol. The dog is the symbol for fidelity and loyalty. There's an arrow, if you have really good eyes, the lighting here is not the best, but there's an arrow on the bucket, which is a symbol for Cupid's arrow. And the maid's old shoe, is really a symbol for love, comfort, uh, 
hope for a safe return and a marriage that really uh, is, is not only comforting, but fits like an old shoe. And so this woman is holding the, the letter, and it looks like it's going to drop, but it's because she's thinking about you know, her, her husband away at sea. It's kind of beautiful when you think of it like that. You might have seen this before. This is a quite popular one by Diego Velasquez. It's called Las Niñas. Bless you. His daughter is in the, no, excuse me. The, the artist is here. And the king is here and here. The queen is here. Sorry, it's so shaky. And their daughter is here in the way, in the center, the focal point. What's happening is this is a typical like royal portrait, and there is a lot of people around, the ladies in waiting. This is a dwarf that was used as a nanny, and because she was small, but also, you know, had the maturity of a, of a woman that was common during those days. Then you have the dog here. Um, some people have said that it's a pit mix or a pit bull because they were considered like a nanny dog and they were really loyal, very friendly and loving towards families. And it's sort of a self-portrait of the artist because as you can see the canvas is here and you, you see the royal family, the, the, the parents, in a mirror reflection. And then you sort of see the king looking back. So it's a lot going on here. But this, so this is a royal painting, and I wanted to include it. Um, the, the, it really is supposed to symbolize that devotion and obedience, uh, cherished, preferred, and, um, and it, so the dog was sort of like a very cherished and, and even like a, a play toy. You know, it was considered like an, a, some, an animal would be able to entertain <clears throat> the children. Right, enough that the kid in the corner is like standing on it. <laughs> Oh, you're right, the leg is on it. I didn't see that. Well, yeah, it really shows you the temperament of the dog. You're right. Um, this artist I have a lot in common with. He put a pug in so many of his paintings. In fact, in London, there's a statue of William Hogarth with a pug. So it's pretty funny. But however, you might not think of that a pug being looking like that because pugs have been <coughs> red, well, what was it, 1745, for the last, you know, 200 years, 250 years, to have a smaller muzzle um, and shorter legs and all that, and bigger eyes. So this is what the original pug looked like. And pugs are an ancient Chinese breed. In fact, uh, the Chinese would use them as lap dogs. And on their, see their forehead here, you don't see too many wrinkles. But when they were born, they had wrinkles, of course, like pugs do. And the Chinese believed that in, within their wrinkles, they could see the symbol for royalty. You know, they write with their symbols. And they believed that they could see the symbol for royalty. So um, that's why um, they, they have these pugs started being traded with other countries, um, and they, specifically France, England. These were started, these lap dogs were traded for spices once the Silk Road opened up. And then on the right, you can see there's another pug in the corner. He included them in so many of his pieces of art. I wonder if the dog's worth his weight in saffron. It's <laughs> <laughs> saffron? <laughs> right, exactly. How much, how much spice for a pug, right? Oh, that's how much saffron well, if you've ever seen, there's a movie of late, um, Marie Antoinette, but there, she was uh, from, let's see, um, she, what was she, not French, she was, um, oh, I can't think right now, but when she had a pug and then when she was brought to France to marry King Louis the 16th, she was unable to bring her pug with her, she wasn't able to bring everything from her country, so she had to leave her pugs behind, but as you'll see, there are some royalty that own pugs, so this is more of a modern, more modern painting. These porcelain items depicting pugs dating back to the 18th and early 19th centuries are both highly collectible and extremely valuable. An entire series of pug figurines was created by a German sculptor named Johann Joachim Kiamler. 
Those figurines served as a secret emblem for the German underground Freemason Lodge, known as the Lodge of the Order of the Pug. They chose the pug as a symbol of loyalty, dependability, and everlasting commitment. <laughs> it's going to rain in here. Um, this is another famous painting called Arnolfini's Wedding Portrait. And these two are to be wed. She is not pregnant. It is just the gathering of the dress. And then down here, maybe like a corn terrier. And this, again, the dog is a symbol of loyalty. And again, sometimes the shoe could mean like a step into the familiar, a step into comfort, knowing what's to be expected. And then in this mirror back here, uh, yeah, you can see the art is similar to the other one, the Los Niños. And the window is a symbol for God entering their marriage, light. Mary Cassatt was an American who uh, grew up in Philadelphia, but spent most of her life in France, very good friends with uh, Degas. And she never had married, never had children, but did was fond of, of both, you know, of, of children and dogs, I should say. She was fond of both, so she painted both. And so this on the left is one of her most famous uh, paintings of a child, maybe her niece, but, um, or family friend, daughter, and then a little animal. So she, I just wanted to show you some famous artists that have also painted patch portraits. Here's Picasso with his dachshund lump. Isn't that cute? <laughs> well, he said that Lump was uh, a muse of 